Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. I asked to be transferred to another department, but they turned me down, so I stopped working. The second story. Manager ordered me to wear a suit, which I refused to wear. I quit and they failed to cope with all the customers and lost money. The third story. New inspector can't leave the parts overnight, and that means she was forced to work for free in OT. The first story is, can't do anything without a medical reason. A few years ago, I worked under a terrible boss whom I shall call Tiff, because of all her tiffs. Unfortunately, I'm not exaggerating when I say terrible. She had HIPAA violations on record. Edit C note. Writing people up for stuff that she told them to do. Writing them up for things that happened when they weren't there changing people's schedules with no notice, and then getting them in trouble when they didn't show up for the change schedule, trying to write people up for using FMLA, the general yelling and petty bullying bad managers do, the works. Senior management knew about all this and aided and abetted her. Anyways, after being hauled into a meeting with her and a senior manager where she lied about me and did her best to paint me as lazy and a generally terrible worker, I'd had enough. I went to the other senior manager, who shall be called Spineless, for reasons you can probably guess and told him that I couldn't deal with this anymore, and I had to be transferred to another department in the store. I had experience in a few other areas which were in high demand, so it wouldn't be hard to find a place for me. It would just be hard to fill my spot in the bakery, especially given it was late in the year and we were always incredibly busy over the holidays. Spineless said no. Well, actually, he said that he'd see what he could do, but it wasn't likely to happen because I was too important to the bakery to lose. I pointed out that it was so stressful that it was affecting my health, and I really couldn't continue. If I had to, I was going to be calling out. He still said no. We can't do anything unless you have a medical condition. Now see, I knew what he actually meant was that there was no way in hell they were actually doing anything so I should just shut up already. Unfortunately for him, I don't like subtext like that, and I didn't feel like dealing with the mistreatment anymore. So I sat there for a moment debating, and decided to give him what he said he needed. See, I have a few medical issues that are annoying, but unless they actually keep me from doing my work, I think it's kind of a cop-out to bring them up. But under the circumstances, management was being completely unreasonable, so cop-outs it was. So I explained that I had an official diagnosis of anxiety, and due to reasons above, I couldn't work under her. Spineless kind of stopped and looked at me and said, Uh, okay, we'll see what we can do, but we'll need you to at least get through the holidays. I told him I would do my best, but I couldn't handle the constant threats of write-ups, so he would have to keep her from doing and acting any disciplinary measures against me. He said sure. I also added that I really, really didn't want anyone else knowing about my anxiety, as I don't like my personal life being spread about. About a month later, something else happens where a bunch of cakes were ruined, and I was the last person who touched it. They were someone else's responsibility as soon as I was done with them. The other person just hadn't done their part, and Tiff was trying to get me in trouble however she could. Tiff hands me a write-up to sign. I'm furious, but I carefully write down in the comments section that I have a medical condition interfering with my work which I had already notified senior management of. Then I insist on having her give me a photocopy of it, which they're supposed to do but often don't. I heard from the supervisor who was also present that when she saw what I had written, Tiff had an appropriately shocked Pikachu face and asked if Soup had known anything about my mysterious medical issue. For once, Spineless had followed directions and not shared private information with the world. I probably should have just escalated to corporate at this point, but I ended up not. Just wrote a nicely worded letter about how I had requested ADA accommodations because anxiety technically can count as a disability. I had already looked it up, and they had done nothing. Stuck copies of the letter along with the write-up and a note from my doctor in Spineless's mailbox, and in the store manager's mailbox. I should probably point out that by this point about four other people had left the bakery due to medical conditions, which were directly related to Tiff. They were legit medical conditions, but either exacerbated by her or used as an excuse to get away from her. So I certainly wasn't the first person to do this. Lo and behold, when you stuff enough legal terms along with relevant meeting recaps and dates into a letter, people do something about it. I had meetings with both the store manager, who insisted he had heard nothing about this, and Spineless, and they offered to get me out immediately but asked if there was any possible way for me to stay through Christmas, which was about two weeks away. I didn't really want to be working a different area when everyone else was already crazy busy with no time to catch me up, so I agreed under the condition that they changed my schedule, so that I was not scheduled with Tiff at any point in time. And what do you know, they got me out right after Christmas. So yeah, asking you shall receive, jerks. 
Hilariously enough, come February, Tiff went on vacation, and the bakery supervisor asked me if there was any way I could come back to help cover, which of course I could do. Figured I might as well stick it in their face that the manager was the problem, not the department. She soon transferred to a different store where she's no doubt still wreaking havoc. But I escaped with my sanity mostly intact, so it was a win for me. Edit. I was told by someone I would expect to know that it's a HIPAA violation when managers gossip and spread information about a medical issue, only revealed to them due to ADA requests, and or discovered through the employee health care plan. I certainly could be wrong, but I know that it was a big enough issue that management from top down got a reprimand from corporate. The next story is... Threaten my job? Thank you, I will. Bit of background. This happened in the UK in about 91-92, and I'm female. At the time, I was about 20-21. to 21. In the early 90s, I'd just come back from working overseas, and as it was December, I needed a job quickly, so I took one in a Turkish restaurant, relevant later. It was a waitress job, and I truly loved the job. The one other waiter was nice. The three chefs were great and taught me a few tips and recipes I still use to this day. The management, husband and wife, seemed okay at first, but typically didn't want to have to do anything except mingle and drink wine during service hours. Never once helping, but always quick with blame. A typical night myself and the other waiter, M, worked our backsides to the bone, and they'd just sit and watch and pester the customers. I didn't see a single tip when I worked in this restaurant, but it's UK, so not compulsory anyway, so I didn't think anything of it at this time. We worked through Christmas and the New Year's Eve shift was approaching, so the manager asked me to purchase some cloth napkins from a store on the other side of the town, which I did. I bought them, took them into the restaurant and I didn't notice until afterwards was shortchanged in my reimbursement for purchasing them. I had to use my own money. One of the managers said she'd had a great idea and she'd like me and the other waiter to wear something in lines of traditional Turkish costume, that evening, for the book's solidly New Year's Eve shift, a shift I was due to start in a few hours. This was the first time she'd mentioned anything about this idea of hers. I mentioned it could be possible but I'd like to see what she had planned. She produced a cardboard box and showed me first the stunning outfit she'd chosen for the waiter, my colleague. I said it looked amazing and questioned what she'd chosen for me. Bear in mind I was very slim, about a size 6 to 8 UK, and about 5 foot 10. She produced from the box this very skimpy see-through outfit that would be more in place in a lover's bedroom. I asked her if she was serious. She said yes, to which I said I'm not wearing that. She then told me that I'm wearing it or I'm fired. So I replied with a simple bye then and reached for my things. She retracted immediately in a panic saying, no, no, I didn't mean that, you need to stay. I smiled and walked out. A few days later, I popped in for my final wages, cash envelope and P45 tax documentation, and the other waiter was there at that time. He said that I'd really left them in the SH that night doing that. They failed to cope with all the customers and lost money. I apologized to him very genuine, to which he smiled broadly and said nothing to be sorry for. The management had to help that night and he even saw some tips. The management were grumpy when they came out to see me and very grudgingly gave me my final wages. I can't remember if they gave me my P45 or not though. The other waiter's reaction to telling me what happened that night still makes me smile to this day. Fortunately, due to the time period, early 90s, I found alternate employment pretty quickly. I'd always had a focused attitude back then and looked at never being picky, so rejecting nothing. Coupled with the bonus of as said it being the early 90s businesses were booming so employment was plentiful in the area. Edit. They paid only for the hours worked, which I recall was short, and as mentioned didn't fully reimburse me for the cloth napkins purchased or cover any gratuity for running that errand in the first place. The last story is, new quality inspector wants it by the book, and now has to work unpaid OT because she's salary. I'll try to make this brief. I was trained in an advanced assembly position to replace a longtime employee who retired last week. I trained for three months, following the man's instructions to the letter, even taking notes on the way he's developed in order to meet out companies demanding production quotas. Last Monday was my first day officially in the position and I felt I was doing almost as good of a job as he was. The way it works, everything I build goes into a 24-hour hold. When I come in, I pull them from the hold, clean them and prepare them for shipping. So last Monday, I start pulling my 24-hour inventory and getting it ready for quality to final inspect before it goes to shipping. Well, we also have a new quality inspector in my department who's apparently really gung-ho about her job. She's salaried, is only supposed to work eight hours, and has never missed a chance to rub it in our faces, because she was also a production employee until two weeks ago when she got promoted. She sees me cleaning the assemblies, and proceeds to chew me out because they had only been on hold for 15 minutes or so, not 24. I informed her that I was taught that the 24-hour hold was to ensure they hold pressure, and that if they hadn't lost pressure in 12 hours, they won't lose pressure in 24. 
and that by the time I had them all cleaned, they would be out of the 24 hour hold and I would have another batch to assemble and put in hold for the next day. That's the way it works. I clean and prepare until my other co-workers have assembled all my sub-assemblies. Then I do the finish assembly while they work on new stuff for the next day. She was adamant she wouldn't touch them until the full 24 hours had passed. So she went and got her supervisor, my supervisor, and the engineering supervisor, who all agreed with me but could see her point. So they told me to start pulling my assemblies out of hold at the 24 hour mark after that day. So I did, and at 3 o'clock she had between 25 and 30 pieces to inspect every day last week. That's right at 3 hours worth of work and she's supposed to leave at 3.30. However, if she has parts in the inspection area, she has to inspect them and get them to shipping the same day. She can't leave parts overnight, so she was forced to work OT for free. I've never felt so much hate from one person when they looked at me before. <laughs> Fast forward to today. My supervisor comes to me and tells me to go back to the system I was using before. That it seemed to flow smoother. I know the real reason though and that's all that matters. Edit. We actually had a meeting about right before this break. I'm going to have two quality engineers working with me this week, and maybe next, trying to sync the final assembly process guide to the new standard that they've given to sub-assembly. They're going to night how, and when the parts reach me and when they go correctly into the hold. They're talking about taking it down to a 12 hour hold, because the materials and things we use are better than they were 25 years ago, and we rarely have any pressure loss or leaks. The downfall of following this quality hold standard is it actually contradicts the rest of our sub-assembly process that our engineering department issued to streamline production and help get parts out the door faster. So while the sub-assembly people are working with a fairly new process, I'm still stuck in a process that was implemented when Clinton was in office. It's the same with quality. I guess they overlooked it when they updated everything three years ago, and the guy I replaced just adapted instead of telling people that something was off. The same with the old quality inspector. He just rolled with the change, and didn't think to mention to his engineering department that things weren't jiving. There's been a ton of wrong paperwork over the last three years that I guess they're just going to overlook. <laughs> Hopefully this will work itself out. Oh, my inspector still hates me. She's saying it's my fault that all these changes need to happen. Edit and update. So I'm now doing things as per quality guidelines. Our quality engineers worked with me all week last week and we finally found a solution that our upper management finds acceptable. It's still a 24 hour hold, which I'm perfectly fine with. But now I have an eight hour window of acceptance, which means I can start prepping my assemblies to go to final inspection after 16 hours. They must still remain in our custody for that eight hour window, then can be shipped. That is only to ensure we have absolutely zero leaks. Quality engineering as well as engineering itself have both agreed that if no leak is found after 16 hours, it's probably not going to be found. But we still hold it for the additional eight to satisfy upper management and their strict guidelines they have in place to ensure customer satisfaction. The big thing is we overhauled an outdated system, and now things should run smoothly with less stress. Haha. <laughs> Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.